Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm your host, James Holst. Now, today's episode is the final episode for season 14. And after 26 weeks of chasing the biggest fish and the hottest bites all over the upper Midwest and Canada, it's time for us to wrap things up on what has been a very challenging season. Now, of course, nobody expected season 14 to wrap up the way it's going to wrap up for us here at In-Depth Outdoors. Everybody's dealing with shelter in place orders. We're living off of footage that we shot last summer, but we're gonna do our best to go out on a high note. And this one's for all those walleye anglers out there that really struggle anytime the walleyes get up in the weeds. We've got a great two-part episode today. First part is gonna be Pat McSherry and Marcus Quam out in South Dakota fishing shallow weed walleyes, throwing shallow running crankbaits. And then we're gonna to transition to uh, PJ Vic and I fishing out on Green Bay, pulling spinner rigs over the tops of the weeds with those spinners weighted with just a small split shot. So if you've ever struggled trying to catch walleyes in or around the weeds, this episode's just for you. So stick around, two-part episode, Weed Walleyes here today on In-Depth Outdoors. There you go. Nice. What'd you get that one on? This is on a shadow wrap. Is that a net fish? This one might need the net. He's spunky. Oh yeah, nice walleye. There we go. Nice work. And she's out. Perfect. Chunky. Yeah. Look at the shoulders on these fish. Just sitting in those weeds, not burning anything. Just ambition prey. Get her back. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> well, today we are just targeting some walleyes in the weeds, casting crankbaits. I came on the uh, shadow wrap shad. Well, that got me to quickly switch over to the shadow wrap shad. Little guy. Little guy. Little big guy. Be a good eater. Those are like my favorite eating size, like those 13, 14 inches. They fry it real nice. Yeah, real nice. Fish. There you go. A decent one here. Is it? Oh yeah. I think I'll scoop this myself. Just tail hook there, but he got it. <laughs> They're so charged up. I mean, being in the shallow water and we get you know, 72 degree water temps. There we go. Oh, they're one of those low 21, 22 inches. Mm hmm. Nice dark fish. Been hiding in the weeds. Oh, yeah. So here's the area that Marcus is running right now. You can see right here is the center line where the boat's going over. You got pretty clean bottom on this side, some scattered rocks in here, but pretty sandy altogether. And then this right side, which is a little bit smeared right now because we're making a right hand turn, is all weeds. You can see that right there. You know, here's clean bottom and rock. This is all scuzzy, lots of weeds there. And that's the right side of the boat. That's where we're casting to, and that's where these fish are hiding. There you go. Nice. Oh yeah, nice walleye. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. I 
just can't get over how charged up these fish get in these weeds. Yeah, and you're cranking it really fast, too. I am. I'm ripping it. and Yeah, nothing subtle or finesse about this at all. Right. I mean, this is as close to, you know, bass fishing or power fishing that yeah. you're going to get for walleye fishing right here. Well, that was fun. I think uh, a lot of guys don't realize when they're fishing like this is there's nothing wrong with being fast. I mean, you just got to power through those weeds. You're going to ball up a lot and you're gonna, it's going to be a pain in the butt, but those fish are in there and it's just, I'm just trying to rip my bait through, keep it as clean as I can to, you know, so a fish will hit it. You don't know their names yet, but you will. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. We say a man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, Ice Fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. On the water, every second counts. So when there's a fish at three o'clock, be right on time with Mega 360 Imaging. Every sweep of our newest technology offers 125 feet of absolute clarity all around your boat. So you can see fish and every detail in every direction. With a clearer picture of what's below, you can catch fish like clockwork. Mega 360 Imaging, only from Humminbird. Boy, he throttled it. Sounded like it. <laughs> yeah, he was a net on him. It's just kind of one of those 20 inches again, but there we go. Nice. There we go. Boy, that's a fun bite when they crush it like that. There it is. Get him back. So really, when you're fishing this shallow water, especially when there's this much vegetation, you're really limited to what you can actually throw. I mean, you need something like a shad wrap, number five shad wrap would work great. These shadow wrap shads are working awesome right now. And swim baits and then lipless cranks are basically kind of your go-tos, aren't they? They are. So that's that shadow wrap shad right there. That's a moss back shiner. Marcus is throwing the fire tiger. I got a little bit of catching up to do. Hopefully with this sun coming out, that'll really push these fish right into the weeds too. A lot of times that can be a pattern where you'll get overcast skies or a lot of wind and they might retreat from those weeds a little bit. But as soon as that sun starts coming out again, they'll be looking to get back in the shade and in those weeds. There we go. Hey, that's a Waldo. Yeah. Bring that back towards you. No. Oh, we got an acrobatic one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There was no question that that was a big bite. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and beautiful fish. They're just all like right in that, I don't know, 19, 21, 22 right. inch range. Get her back. 
Boom, right by the boat. There you go. That's a decent one. I need a little scoop there, Pat. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. You know, that bait was getting close to the boat again, but I was just cooking it. You know, that bait was probably going five or six miles an hour. Nice fish. It's kind of been the average of what we've been getting all day. So really chunky up in the weeds like that. What would you say? They're mostly foraging on freshwater shrimp and then some perch or whatever bait fish they can get their mouths on, but really nice fish. There we go. Marcus, you on one? I got another one here too. <laughs> This is getting fun. <laughs> I gotta clear the my bait out of the net. There you go. Just the uh, eater variety. Rattling wrap again? Rattling wrap. Nice. Yeah, these fish are charged up, man. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how hard they pop that thing. So here's the type of weed that we're fishing. It's just, I don't know the exact name for it. Uh, it's just a really stringy kind of grass that grows pretty thick real tight but then it kind of gradually weans off out to about that six to seven feet of water is the outside of the edge there and you really aren't able to cast a jig right into the mat of it so you need something that'll swim over it like these crankbaits a jig in a plastic or uh, even like a lipless crank like Mark's, Marcus is throwing right now and you're definitely going to have uh, some casts where you get in the stuff but that's where the fish are, so it's kind of a, it's definitely why casting would work a lot better in this scenario than trolling. If you're trolling, you're just going to constantly be reeling your baits in, checking them, cleaning them. At least with the casting, you can kind of figure out where exactly that thick weed edge is after a few casts, and you can kind of dictate on where exactly you cast from there and try and get it as close to that weed as you can, but just kind of touch it. You don't want to be right in the thick stuff, but just right on the edge, just kind of kissing it as you're reeling in. Boom, right by the boat. <laughs> just barely hooked, there he goes. <laughs> it's funny how they, that bait must, they're probably tracking it, following it, and as soon as it starts coming up towards the surface, they cut chase up and nip it quick. Yeah, because what are we reeling? Six miles an hour? <laughs> I bet. That was, that's one big thing for triggering these fish. I learned that early in the day when Marcus was cleaning my clock. He's just burning that crankbait in. And I was fishing it slower, giving it more twitches and pauses, but it's totally like a reaction strike of that thing zipping over their heads in the weeds and getting them to come unglued on it. Hey, hey, right by the boat. <laughs> that doesn't get old. <laughs> there we go. Nice one. Yeah, you're watching that lure from about, you know, 10, 15 yards away and all of a sudden, think, kind of disappears for a second. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't get old. No. I feel very lucky to live here and uh, get to do this all the time. Introducing Suffix Advanced Fluorocarbon. A new level of suppleness. A new level of toughness. A new level of sensitivity. A new category of fluorocarbon. Hello, future. Available in six technique specific models. The new custom series spinning rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Deadeye custom series rods offer an ultra responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Deadeye custom series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Akuma is inspired fishing. 
Glacial Lake Stock is your number one source for Yeti ice houses. With our large inventory of new and used Yetis, our experienced staff will help you select the perfect model for the way you fish. From sale to service, Glacial Lake Stock has you covered. As an authorized Yeti service center, we can handle all your service or warranty needs and work to keep you fishing all winter long. Stop in today or check us out online at GlacialLakeStock.com and make this ice season your most enjoyable and comfortable ever. The Boat Center is excited to announce the arrival of the Delta Series by StarCraft Boats. The Delta Series is a premium quality fishing boat that offers refined and highly functional storage, exceptional performance, and a lifetime plus six transferable warranty. All Delta Series boats are available with highly reliable Yamaha outboards. To learn more, stop in today or visit us online, theboatcenter.com. And as always, remember to have fun fishing. Whoa! Fish on! <laughs> Get him, BJ! Ah, All right. Go. So, real nice fish. What we're doing is we're pulling uh, spinner blades, tip of the night crawler, and we're weighting it with just one split shot. We're running it out over the tops of the weeds, fishing boards. Deadly effective under really tough conditions like this. All right, there we go. See you, bye. All right, that was a nice fish. Yeah. You know, you get real tough conditions like this. Lake lays flat, calm, lakes with really good visibility. Uh, very often these walleyes will get in tight to the, the good, healthy weed growth that we've got here. You know, one thing we want to point out though, we do have access to deep water nearby. This is not the kind of pattern where you're going to go back into a bay uh, where everything's, you know, five, six, seven, eight feet deep and fish weeds like this at this time of year right. and get on some nice walleye. So do keep that in mind. Uh, you're looking for good, healthy weed growth access to deep water. What's deep water here? 30 feet. Whoa! <laughs> Fish on! Yes. <laughs> what is going on? You know, how we came to uh, give this weed pattern a shot is the way a lot of uh, things come together when you're a fisherman. We tried a lot of other stuff that didn't work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was like, we got to go find, try those weeds because this, you know, reef stuff and you know, deeper water, midday with no wind, just wasn't working at all. We just got set up, made one, you know, maybe half hour pass, We're putting the pattern together now. Boy, he's digging. Yeah, he, they get crazy when they see that motor. Well, look he's at just him. minding his business, sitting in there the tops of some cabbage weeds, and then the next thing you know, he's coming, <laughs> coming to see me. That was the other experiment right there. That's actually a number three even. Oh, so you went even smaller, smaller than a four. That is a nice fish. Hmm. Nice build to these weed walleyes. Oh, let's get a whole bunch more like this. A couple bonus perks would be great. If it doesn't happen, so be it. And I'm gonna fire this one back. Okay. See you later, fish. Nice. This is fun. Yeah. You know, back in Minnesota, uh, great fishing. But we can only fish one spinner at a time. So, you know, just casting that uh, June bug spinner or, uh, you know, off the bow of the boat like I was talking about earlier, that just, that works great. But here in Wisconsin, three rods a guy, this is the way to do it. <laughs> Looking decent. There we go. Just went over the top of a wolf pack. Saved ourselves a nice yeah. screen capture there on the hummingbird yeah. and doink. Yeah, and that's what I found a lot when these when these fish really start going on the chew. Middle board. Oh, one over there too. You look on the mega imaging and they start packing up and you can see the separation from the bottom. And when, when you see that, you pretty much get ready. I think that uh, fish dropped me on this side. Did it? I have been rejected. <laughs> Come on, guys. Oh! <laughs> I let him down. <laughs> that's all right, you got another that's one going right. over here. Yep. <laughs> We'll try the try our luck on this one. If at first you don't succeed, <laughs> try again. I try, try again. Yeah. If you do have another one of those blades, we have got to get it out there because yeah. that thing is just about magic. Yeah, it is. And then on this one, which has been really consistent as well, it's a, the number four Colorado purple, and. Uh, that's that number three Northland bait fish series. Yeah, these are all bait fish series. Um, I really like them. They're they're flashy. You got good color contrast. Um, in in a, in a lot of days, it's it's either bright patterns or 
purple. That's, that's pretty much what works best for me uh, up here on the bay. I'm gonna take it really easy. Ooh, what's going you didn't on? like that. <laughs> Got him. Got him. There we go. Oh, yeah. well, that is that purple. Yeah, it is. Man, that, yeah, Look how that, pretty one, that one is. That one's quality. Nice golden fish. Oops, settle down, bud. That is a nice, chunky weed walleye right there. We go through one of those wolf packs, yeah. and it's chaos. Yeah, and every time. We end up with three to four rods in the boat. Yeah. Yep. That's what it's all about. It's cool Weed pattern. walleyes, awesome stuff. It's a nice fish, PJ. Yeah, that is a gorgeous fish. Bye, fish. See you later. All the, right. the quality's nice. Yeah, it is. They're really nice, well-fed, chunky walleyes in here. You know, that one that got off on you actually set you up to get that other rod to get the bigger fish. That's true. That's true. Work, Otherwise, you would have stole it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy over here. I don't know what happened to you. I, I'm pretty sure I've got two boards over here with no bait on them. Yeah, I, I think we should reel these all in, re-up, and get them back out. Start over. Yep. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. What lies beneath can no longer hide. New Mega Imaging Plus uses high-frequency sonar to show you fish and structure up to 200 feet below your boat and 200 feet out to either side. No more secrets, no more guesswork, just a clearer picture of the world below, down to a fish's species and direction. Because more detail means more of this. Only from Humminbird. aggressive hit I've ever seen. <laughs> Pretty lazy about it. <laughs> they are chunky. We got a double. That has been kind of the MO. Yeah. Oop, that one come on. Did it? Yep. Super nice healthy fish. Back it goes. We're getting this dialed in pretty good. Yeah, we are. They're not on top of the weeds. They're just off the edge. And what I can show you here is if you use down imaging, this is what it actually looks like. So these weeds were going over here. If I just go to down imaging, you can see they're just scrubby. They're not tall at all. Now, if we moved in to about eight and a half foot of water, that's where the real tall you know, cabbage forms. And I would imagine that as we got later into the day, sunlight, you know, sun angle gets a little bit lower, the fish will move up into that shallower water. But right now, they're just out here running on this real short, I would assume it's either maybe like coontail or, you know, who knows, doesn't matter. It's about a foot tall and they're running on that versus in the heavier cabbage. And you can see it, this is what it looks like on the side imaging. It's a little clumpy, a little pillowy, and you can pick the walleyes out in that. They'll just show up as just really dark shadows if they're up off the bottom. And we've been going through, you know, pretty consistent wolf packs. Uh, I've done some, I've saved some really nice side imaging examples. So if you're not sure what you're looking for on side imaging, you know, what is a walleye, what isn't a walleye, what does six walleyes look like on side imaging, we'll have some real good examples for you. Uh, we're running these spinners about 1.1 mile an hour. And there is just a super easy trick to doing that if you've got Hummingbird uh, Johnson outdoors equipment on your boat. That would be Minn Kota on the front, networked with your fish finders. And what you can do is you can push your power button or you can use the remote. It's a little easier to show on the big unit here, so that's how I'm going to do it. Push that power button and up pops this panel. It allows you to steer 
and set a target speed. So right now I'm gonna minus down to 1.1. You can see that I've got cruise control turned on. Let the system do the work. You set it at 1.1, it pretty much keeps it right there. You know, it'll go one mile an hour, 1.2. I mean, it's dealing with wind just like we would be. But just that speed control is fantastic. And you know, if you need to touch it up a little bit, just 1.6. It'll slowly ramp up and cruise control you at 1.6. It's a pretty cool little system. I think you got one right there, Oop, buddy. Yep, that's one going. Oop, there's another one right there outside. Uh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> We uh, were waiting all day long for this wind to kick up. And now that it's here, man, I tell you what, these fish are going bonkers. Pretty rare for us to get one, just one fish on at a time. There's a fish here, it's not very big. How's yours? This one feels decent. Not well, a bad fish at all. I think we have conveyed the message. Spinner eggs, size three through five, with a number four split shot in front of it, 40 to 70 foot back behind boards. We run those along the weed lines, get things dialed in as far as color, and you're gonna catch some nice fish. What's yours look like? It looks like a nice chunky. Oh. I'd say 21 That thing's been eating inches. good. Yeah. Not bad at all. I've got a decent walleye here too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. We'll just end it right <laughs> here on a double. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this one the line real quick and then grab your wow. grab your net. This day turned out all right, PJ. <laughs> yeah, it did. What we, we got there? Oh, is it a oh, sheep head? It's a sheep's head, yep. I get the booby prize on the way out. <laughs> I got a sheep head. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna get some of those. And some days you're gonna get lots of those. Well, once the wind picked up, <laughs> yeah, we didn't kinda, get very many of them. They kinda went away then. Yeah, when that's the just fine. Out. All right. All right. We'll get this one back in the water. That's a solid fish, man. That is not bad at all. I mean, that's been kind of the average. So that brings us to the end of today's show. I hope everybody that watched is gonna find this information really useful and be able to put it to work out there on the water. Uh, now, before we go, I do wanna thank everyone that tunes in every week to watch our show. Without you, we could not do what we do here at In-Depth Outdoors. And of course, we owe a huge thanks to all of our sponsors that throughout the last 14 years and the trying times that we're all dealing with right now, they've always been there for us. So uh, do us all a favor here at End Up Outdoors, give them a chance to earn your business. So uh, at the end of season 14, we wanna thank everybody and we wish everybody a good summer. We'll see you again next fall for the start of season 15 here at End Up Outdoors. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.